When I served in Northern Ireland back in the 1980s, I had IRA men try to kill me with bomb and bullet. When we came here in the 1980s, we knew exactly who the enemy was. None of this waffle that you hear in the media today that we didn't know what we were doing. We knew exactly what we were doing. We were coming here to defeat the terrorism of the IRA. Friends, I want to tell you something. I believe we achieved our mission and our aim, and the IRA were defeated. I think four words, four words can sum up the 50 years of Operation Banner, because even though it's officially, it's officially finished, we still know that there are terrorists who would target and kill members of the security forces and ex-members of the security forces. Many of the veterans standing here check under their vehicles every single day. Many of the veterans standing here have security at their houses, have personal issue weapons, because they still have to defend themselves from the Republican onslaught that still continues today. That must be put to a stop. It must finish for good. The four words, the four words that sum up Operation Banner are this, sacrifice, success, sell out and slander. The first one I want to talk about is sacrifice and I want to talk about a colleague of John Ross's and John may well have known him, I don't know. A man called Sergeant Mick Willits. You don't hear much about Sergeant Mick Willits in the media. How many people here know the name Mick Willits? A few of you. Let me tell you who Mick Willits was. Mick Willits was a sergeant in the Parachute Regiment. He was serving in Springfield Road Police Station. A reprobate, vile, Republican terrorist threw a bomb into that police station. The fuse was about that long and sparking. There was no time to clear or evacuate the area. Behind Sergeant McWillits stood a family, a Catholic family, a man, a woman, and two children. What did McWillits do? Did he run for the door? No. He stood in front of that bomb, and McWillits took the full blast of that bomb in his body, and he died to save that young Catholic family on the Springfield Road. And what was the thanks he got? as his body was taken out of Springfield Road RUC station. The local people jeered and shouted obscenities at the man that had saved their lives. It's an absolute disgrace. And that slander of the Parachute Regiment has continued from that day to this day. Let's give a massive round of applause for the Parachute Regiment. <laughs> The next name I mention, none of you will probably know this name. It's a man called Paul Sutcliffe. Twenty years, twenty years after Mick, Mick Willits was killed in an IRA bomb, Paul Sutcliffe was travelling in a patrol near Armagh City in a Land Rover. Anybody that knows about the Land Rovers that we used to travel about in in the late 80s and the early 90s, they might as well have been made out of paper mache. It was a fab, uh, um, a, a fab armoured vehicle. They fired a horizontal mortar at that vehicle. It went straight through. It hit Paul Sutcliffe square in the chest. He was blown out of the vehicle and blown to bits. That man was a personal friend of mine. Like me, he came to Northern Ireland. He met an Ulster woman who he fell in love with and he married. And he served in the UDR. And serving his country, he died for his country. He lay dying and bleeding on that road. Nobody remembers his name. Nobody is pursuing the terrorists that murdered him. It's a disgrace what happened to the veterans in Northern Ireland. It's a disgrace what happened to the serving soldiers that were murdered by these IRA scoundrels. But the worst successes. How many people remember Loch Hall? Let's have a, a massive round of applause for the SAS soldiers. The team, the team of terrorists, the team of terrorists that were wiped out at Loch Gaul were responsible for countless murders in the border area. They had literally slaughtered the Protestant community. They had slaughtered members of the security forces, off-duty policemen, off-duty UDR men. They steamed into Loch Gaul thinking that they were going to storm the place and be heroes. All of them ended up dead and it wasn't too soon. Yes. How 
many people, how many people remember Gibraltar? And the BBC made such a fuss about Gibraltar. It was such a scandal that these innocent tourists were shot in this part of Britain, far off near Spain. What a scandal it was that these people were shot like dogs in the street. One of the men that was shot in that ambush was Daniel McCann, the butcher of Belfast. He was a murdering IRA gunman and he had it coming. So we had successes. How many people's lives were saved by the British Army? How many weapons caches that were found by the British Army saved scores of innocent lives, both Catholic and Protestant in this country? We cannot measure what the British Army did in Northern Ireland because every life saved is not quantifiable. The only thing we can look at is lives lost. That success that the British Army brought about, I believe, defeated the IRA. The IRA were a spent force in the early 90s. McGuinness himself was days away from getting arrested when he sent his little message through his lackey and I 6 saying, the war is over, how can we bring it to an end? That was a surrender statement. The IRA surrendered and we accept the IRA surrender. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, we know what happened next. John Major, that limp-wristed Prime Minister, came in. And then even worse, the traitor and the liar, Tony Blair, came in. And what did Blair do? He took victory and he turned it into surrender. He snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. He is a traitor. He is a war criminal. He is a liar. And he should be in front of the Hague for what he's done. And by the way, I'm talking about what he's done in Northern Ireland, not what he did in Iraq. That's another story. So there was a sellout, and John has very eloquently gone through the sellout. There's no point in me going over ground that John's already covered. But that sellout was a complete sellout, not just of the veterans. The sellout of the veterans was scandalous enough, but the people of Ulster were sold out by Tony Blair, and it's time we started taking back the ground that was given. <laughs> And of course, after the sellout, after the sellout, there's been the slander, the slander of the good people of Ulster, the slander of the UDR. How many UDR men paid in blood to protect this country? And when you look at the documentaries and read the internet, you would think the UDR was just a paramilitary force. What a lie. The UDR was a fine regiment of the British Army, and they need to be saluted by the people of Ulster and the people of the United Kingdom. Some of the things that have been said, some of the things that have been said about the UDR, sadly even by fellow veterans, are an absolute scandal and a disgrace. But the slander goes on and on and on. Let me remind you, let me remind you, the IRA, the IRA murdered 1,800 people in the Troubles in Northern Ireland. 700 of those people were from their own Roman Catholic community. So how can they start pointing the finger at British soldiers who killed 156 civilians in the Troubles? And as John has already said, none of those were murders. Some of them were accidental shootings. Some of them were negligent discharges. Some of them were in confusion. How can there be a comparison? There is no comparison. The world has been turned on its head and it is absolutely wrong and it's time that we started to put things right again. So what is the solution? What is the solution to the sacrifice, the success, the sellout and the slander of the British Army? We need to educate our children. We veterans need to tell the truth about what happened in Northern Ireland and we need to make sure that our voice is heard. How many times have you seen John Ross interviewed on the television? Very, very rarely. Our voice is deliberately silenced. We need our voices to be raised. And I say this to any veterans that see this on the internet. Grow backbone and start coming to these demonstrations. Put your head above the parapet because it's been above the parapet for 30 years and you might as well realise there is no hiding place in this country. Stand with us, stand for us and stand for the veterans of Northern Ireland. Thank you very much.